God bless you and welcome. I'm Dr. Lori Givens with GWB Ministries and you're tuning in to Bent But Not Broken. I am glad to have you in on this morning and I look forward to prophetically speaking into your life on today. Let's get started. I want to open up with a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for allowing me to be your vessel on today to speak, Father God, to your people. I want to speak healing, Father God. I want to speak life, Father God, into your people. And I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. In Jesus name, I pray. As I said, I'm on assignment today to speak prophetically into your life. And I'm going to be coming from Isaiah on today, Isaiah 61. And as we know, Isaiah was a great prophet. And this passage is filled with great hope of a great future. Isaiah 61, I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 3. And the word of the Lord says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the good news, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ unto the meek. And he has sent me to announce release and liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, those that have lost their vision, to set free those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by tragedy, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the favor of God abound greatly, and the vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3 says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them uh, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy word. Listen, I'm here today to tell you that this is a season of restoration and recovery. God has a plan to recover everything that has been lost. He's going to restore us back to the Garden of Eden days. Remember, with those days, there was nothing to worry about. Everything that the first Adam messed up, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, is going to set back in order. It is a part of the kingdom of heaven that's coming down on the earth to make things right right again, redeeming us back to God's original plan. Now, how many of you know that in the end, God always wins? Amen? Oh yeah, I don't know about you, but whenever you recover something that has been lost, you tend to look back at what is originally, what you originally had with different eyes. We have a different eye of gratitude when we recover something that we've lost. Let me give you an example. You don't know how good food is until until you've gone hungry. Amen. You don't know how good a good night's sleep is until you've had trouble sleeping all night. So when you look back, you look back with different eyes of gratitude when you understand the whole principles of recovery. So let's take a look today. Let's take a look at some of the things that God is going to be restoring and recovering in this season. If we look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. It says, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Number one, recovery begins with a relationship with God. Until you make peace with God, you cannot make peace with yourself. And you can't make peace with anyone else. You must get the source right first. He is the source of our joy. He is the source of our peace. And because if you deal with the person, or if you've ever dealt with the person who does not have peace in themselves, they will cause hell in your life. And so when we make peace with God, we make peace within ourselves, and then we become peacemakers in all of our relationships. Number two, in this season, God will begin to uncover the awe of who he is and what he does. In Acts 2, verse 43, I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. It says, everyone was filled with awe. Mm. 
and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. Now awe is an overwhelming feeling of reverence and admiration or fear. He will restore the awe of who he is and people will once again begin to fear the Lord. It says when the apostles went about working, um, working for God, God would begin to, be, to confirm their word and signs and wonders and there was an awe that filled the people and God is going to restore that awe to us. It would be awesome if we all had the reverence again in the church when we talk about God. If we have that awe about God being in our lives and the things that he's doing for us. The third thing in this season that God is going to restore, he's going to restore our spiritual vibrancy. Psalms 23 verses 2 and 3 says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, sometimes you can burn out because you don't do enough of what restores you. So when he talks about this in Psalms 23, when he says he leads me beside the still waters, he restores my soul. He's saying that he gives you back your mind. He gives us our mind back when we're all frustrated and we're discombobulated. God will give you back your mind. He says he will help you get your fire back. We need to get that fire back, that first love. He restores my spiritual equilibrium. Hallelujah. When I get up in the morning and I lay before the Lord and I pray, he restores my spiritual equilibrium. He brings me back to an emotional composure. Sometimes we can just lose our composure, but if we are laying or led by the still waters, God will restore our emotional composure. He begins to do some things that collaborate me once again. He restores my soul is what he says. He gets my emotions, my hormones, everything that's been out of balance, God restores and he'll begin to have, you'll begin to have a spiritual vibrancy again. Some may call it a revival. I don't know about you, but I need a revival in my soul. Hallelujah. The fourth thing in this season that God will restore, he will begin to restore our lives. We saw that uh, what he did in the life of Ruth, who was an old woman who lost her husband and both of her sons, and she felt like she didn't have anything to live for. But God said, I will restore your life. In Ruth 4.15, it says, he will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. Come on now, we need some, <laughs> some sustaining in our old age, okay? Come on now, and he will restore your life. We lost a lot of things over these last couple of years and we need some restoration. We need some healing. Yes. Lastly, in this season, God is going to restore our health. We've had some health challenges. We've had long COVID. Some of us are still suffering from the COVID effects. And so God says, I will restore your health. In Jeremiah 30, 17, he says, I will give you back your health and heal your wounds, says the Lord. Yes. Things that have hurt you, the pains that you were dealing with. I don't care if it's a father wound or if it's a mother wound or whether you're wounded by a friend or what they call now church hurt. God says, I will heal your wounds. I will heal your wounds. And we must stop. Listen to me. We must stop looking at human beings to heal that which only God can heal. Let me say that again. We must stop looking for human beings to heal that which only God can heal. Listen, I want you to realize that we are entering into a time of refreshing that is orchestrated by God himself. A refreshing is coming to God's people. God spoke about it prophetically in Isaiah 43, 19. He says, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun it. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland where you felt dry. God says, I'm going to ready you and get you refreshed. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to bring water into the life and to restore your life. If you want to stay youthful, you must hydrate. 
If you want to stay useful, you must hydrate. So God says, I'm going to send water your way. It's going to be like a spiritual IV. Hallelujah. He's going to hydrate your whole being to renew your youth, renew your life. And notice what he says in verse 20. He says, the wild animals in the field will thank me. Hallelujah. Even the wild stuff that you've never been able to tame before. Listen, the jackals and the owls too will thank me for giving them water in the desert. I'm getting ready to refresh the wild side of you. That wild stuff, you know, that wild stuff in us that we've never been able to tame. Oh, you don't know. Hallelujah. He's going to tame that for you. He says, yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland. So my chosen people, my chosen people will be refreshed. There is a refreshing people that God is going to send our way. It's coming to the people of God. Now he's talking to the people of God. Amen. You don't know what a gift refreshment is until you've been worn out, dehydrated, tired, worn out by bad news, bad attitudes, bad situations, bad financial issues. But when God says, I will refresh you, hallelujah, Jesus will do it. And Jesus says that the refreshing that comes, it will lift your spirits. It will lift your attitude. It will lift your gratitude. It starts lifting you and refreshing you. And you'll start to realize I can make it. I can do this. In spite of what I'm going through, I can make it. In spite of what I've been through, I can make it. In spite of the lies that the devil tells me, I can make it. And notice what he says. He said, I'm about to do a new thing. I'm doing something new. I believe this was the reason for the pandemic because God is about to do something new. He had to set some things in order. He had to expose some things. So, you know, God is telling Israel, he was telling Israel that because they were in a bad situation. They had been enslaved. They had been in captivity. And all that they could realize was all the injustice that had been done to them all of the depression and all of the oppression that they had been through. And sometimes that's with us. All of the brokenness that they've been through, the deprivation, the starvation, they had been going without and they couldn't get it out of their minds, all of the negative stuff that had been happening to them and that they had been going through. Have you ever tried to get to people or get people to move forward, but all that they can do is be hung up on what has happened in their past? So I'm here to tell you today, God says, wake up people. He's getting ready to do something new, but we have to let go of the past hurts. We have to let go of the past failures. We have to let go of all of those things, the lies that the enemy is trying to tell us and put in our minds. And we have to know that God will do a new thing. And in this season, it is a season of recovery and restoration. So that I hope that this has encouraged you on today. I want to pray for those that are out there that may be downtrodden, that may be depressed, that may be going through something and have suicidal thoughts, that may be having problems with their families, problems with their children, issues in their finances. Father God, I thank you right now, Lord. I ask right now, Lord, that you will lift them up, Father God, that you will touch them, Father God, that are feeling downtrodden. Lord, that you will go out and you will go before them and make every crooked place straight. Father God, I thank you right now for the word that has gone forth. It has encouraged my heart and Lord, I pray that it encourages someone else's heart to know that they can make it. Lord, they just need to trust in you, Father God. Turn all their burdens over to you, Father God. You will bring water and refreshment to those dry places, Father God. Lord, you will lift up their hung down heads, Father God. You will make a provision, Father Father God, because you are a way maker. You will heal them, Father God. Lord, you said if we would turn from our wicked ways and pray. Father God, you will heal our land. And so we trust in you today, Father God, that you are doing a new thing in this season. And Father God, we ask right now those blessings to touch each and every one of your people right where they are. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. 
Hallelujah. Listen, I pray that you were blessed by what you've heard today. And if you'd like, please consider making a donation to this broadcast to keep us on the air. We're called Bent But Not Broken. It is GWB Ministries and I am Dr. Lori Givens. You can make a donation using my cash app. Cash app is dollar sign Lady Lori. That's L-A-D-Y-L-O-R-I-E. You should see that on the bottom of your screen. Or you can Zell to 562-607-9112. Consider making a donation. And if you would please share this broadcast with someone so they can also too be blessed. And until next time, God bless you. Remember, you may be a little bent, but you are not broke. God bless you.